Joining us to discuss sanctions and their impact is William Lee. He's the chief economist at the Milken Institute. Thank you very much for your time there. Uh, now, firstly, European allies are grappling with how to move forward. Some are calling for more sanctions. Others want to focus on enforcement of those that are already levied. Is the unity that the US and Europe have displayed in the last month or so standing up to Russia, or is it beginning to show its limits? I think the limits of sanctions has been pretty clear for most people. I, I think the mixed messaging from the administration about the use of sanctions to deter and not deter or to make life more difficult, uh, that mixed messaging, I think, is uh, causing more confusion. I think sanctions have been used historically uh, against countries that acted in a way that other countries did not approve. Uh, we go from Nazi Germany and, and, and uh, Japan's invasions during World War II to South Africa's apartheid policy. But right now, the role of sanctions is to make life so difficult for Russia and Russian people that pressure will be on the government to change its policies. That's the theory. In practice, we have to realize that the, gov the government of Russia does not respond quickly to public policy and, and uh, public opinion. Uh, if you target the oligarchs, well, the oligarchs in some ways are acting at the behest of this government itself. So the, it's very limited how, how much uh, pressure can be put on uh, Putin right now by either the populace or the oligarchs. So what can, can NATO do? And Bel the Belgian Prime Minister, Alexander de Cruz, said the sanctions must have a bigger impact on the Russian side than the European side. So what would be the ideal sanction scenario, if you like, that hurts Russia but still protects Europe? The ideal sanction is one that has tremendous uh, 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 pressure on the Russian people and zero pressure on the West. That doesn't exist. As we see, the sanctions that have been put in place now, restrictions on trade and restrictions on financial uh, uh, flows is causing energy prices to go to escalate, causing agricultural prices to escalate, and that pain is being shared by all around the world. The Russians will be experiencing a lot of uh, inflation, as you just mentioned, up to about 20 percent, but Russians have lived with, lived with sanctions for quite a while. From their invasion and excursions in 2014, sanctions have been put on, and Russian economy has really adapted and changed its need for a lot of imported goods and have created a lot of domestic substitutes. So that has really blunted a lot of the uh, force of these sanctions. But how long can that go on? The Institute of International Finance sees the sanctions wiping out 15 years of Russia's economic expansion, and the IMF says Russia will plunge into deep recession. What would that mean for Russia and its people, say, a year or two in? Well, certainly the, the, the standard of living will fall tremendously. Um, and the real question is, will the political system in Russia allow such pressures, such economic pressures, to translate to political action? Uh, will it be able to somehow get the military and the oligarchs and the citizenry of Russia to put the right kind of pressure on Putin in order to change his ways? Uh, the only time that really happened in the, uh, the, where pressure was put on the government to change its policy that I can think of was the Cuban Missile Crisis, where Khrushchev just backed down. Right now, Putin doesn't seem to have the, mind for, the, the frame of mind that will back down. You mentioned the military putting pressure from that point of view. The U.S. is expected to sanction companies providing technology for Russian military and intelligence services. What might that, what might that mean for Russia's advancements on the ground? Well, right now, Russia hasn't been making very much use of that military intelligence uh, and the software. In fact, what we see are mechanical failures of Russia military to implement a lot of the intelligence it's gathered. Um, so I think right now I, uh, those restrictions will extend the, the limited capabilities of the Russian government, uh, of the Russian military, uh, and, and, and extend their incompetence um, and, and allow the Ukrainians more time to establish and reestablish their positions and to perhaps even force back a lot of the Russian incursion. All right, William, thanks very much for that. William Lee for us there, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute. Thanks, President.